when you do something new and you feel like an idiot and you don't have that feeling of being like feeling great that you're doing something you know so well that's a feeling that needs to be embraced because that's when you're pushing yourself into the unknown and that's absolutely what i want to do more and more i want to keep on teaching myself new things Welcome to the Flying Fruit Bowl, a platform dedicated to discussion and exploration of art and the creative process. This is the continuation of my conversation with Sacred Monolith. This is the second part. If you haven't heard the first part, please go back to the last episode to hear the first part. Sacred Monolith is an artist and illustrator from the UK who creates esoteric images that evoke a sense of mystery and intrigue. I really enjoyed this interesting conversation and I really, really hope you enjoy it too. So getting back into your work, yeah. um, so the idea of dark art, um, mm. quote unquote dark art. So to be honest, in the last like, what, maybe, I don't know, 10 years or so, mm. I think we've probably seen like a rise in art that's become very um, visceral, very kind of from the, I was going to say from the good, mm. very kind of emotional. And, you know, I guess the dark is probably the best way to describe it. Um, you know, we've got those artists such as like Phil Hale, Justin Mortimer, yeah. um, even like Francis Bacon, yeah. of course, um, that kind of really delve into, you know, the, the the psychology of the self and our lives and just kind of the darker side part of our, I guess in a way you could argue like the shadow self, for instance, as you were yeah. saying earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is your opinion on this kind of current rise in dark art? And do you think that these kind of imagery, images and imagery is important for us to, for, for the public to be viewing? Um, I I feel like the trends um, that you get in society in all areas of, of life, you know, they're just things that ebb and flow and they don't matter because all of the content that could, that, there's a sufficient amount of content was around way way before i was ever born in terms of you know is there enough artwork in the world that i would be constantly inspired and constantly satisfied and intrigued and you know being being totally mesmerized yes way before i was ever born you know i could have been born 500 years ago and the big difference is the technology giving us access to it. So if you were born in the year, I don't know, like 1400, um, all of this great artwork of the world would have existed that was around at that time, but you might have never got to see any of it. So you never actually get to have that element in your life, but it's all there. So whether people are making it so in terms of like dark art, whether people, if, if nobody today was making any dark art at all, there's uh, millions and millions of, uh, of incredible pieces of dark art that already exist. And it's all there for the people that want, that want it. Um, and as far as like trends, I don't really have a problem. I don't have an opinion on it. I don't mind, you know, it's like, avocados becoming trendy and then and then <laughs> not being trendy and then becoming trendy again um it's kind of more about like do i like avocados yes you know will i like them when will i like them when they're not trendy yes <laughs> it's fine yeah no. it's totally fine with me i don't have a problem at all um i don't need it to be obscure for me to be into it i don't need it to be uh popular for me to be into it i'm totally totally fine um with it regardless um but i do think it's interesting from i suppose it's like a sociological thing or something like why why does something become a trend at what time that's really interesting you know it's like why do um at certain times apocalypse post-apocalypse movies become massively popular you know like what is it what is it that makes people want those stories at certain times and then there are times when that's not 
you know, some things are some things are less interesting. Um, you know, I think I've turned on the Prime Video and I saw that there's like a new movie and it was called like I don't know, maybe it was in the synopsis, not in the main, but it was like uh, the first line of the synopsis is like COVID twenty two has has. <laughs> it's like okay i can see what yes yeah, so it's not even it's funny but it's like wow it's so, like, wow. It's so then, obvious I, how they came hmm. to the movie idea you know what i mean it's like okay i don't think i need to like write a thesis on this for me to <laughs> come to the conclusion of like why they came up with that idea but on novelty value i'm sure they've probably got a lot of viewers but when it comes to you know some things are like really interesting so they were like well there was a weird time when it not that long ago there was a massive boom in post-apocalypse movies and that's just interesting to me it's like why well like when i look back and i'm like okay why was like heavy metal so big at certain times like if you listen to i don't know like metallica albums that are like from like 1986 or something and you're like, why was this so big in 1986? Like, what was going on in 1986? Because that Metallica album could come out today and it would be just as good. But it won't be, a, it won't be, I mean, maybe it would because they're really good, but would it be a massive hit like it was when it came out? I don't know. Or was it because it was like a trend? Or was it because there was something that was going on at that moment in time? And, you know, when it comes to like, um, I know I'm just talking about music right now, but it's just, for me, it's like the same idea. So when it comes to like pop, pop music, like pop music has, I think, has become much better. Like pop music has become quite sophisticated sonically in the last like maybe five years. It's kind of like pretty good um, compared to when I was like, I don't know, in the year like 2001 or whatever 2002 mm. where pop music was fucking awful it was absolutely fucking awful and then when i'm like really into like people like afix and people like that i sort of think to myself when they were like so so when afix was like releasing this like totally innovative electronic music in like the late 90s and that was like really, really a subculture that was like really underground. And then now we're in 2021 and a lot of those ideas, a lot of those sounds are in pop music. And I kind of wonder to myself, is it the, is it that the genius pioneer people in electronic music, they push the envelope right out, way out there and it took 20 years for that to kind of become the sound that everyone's used to and people listen to. You know, there, there are literally like pop songs from the last five years that just sample Aphex Twin. And it's like, that's just Aphex Twin. <laughs> I'm just listening to Aphex Twin right now. And they just took a sample and, and then they just sang over it. And like, when that came out, that was like the most fucking obscure thing ever. But now that sits happily on the radio. And is it just because it takes time for these things to kind of seep in? And, and I do wonder when it comes to, like, let's be more specific, talk about art, for example. I do wonder if it's the case that as, as uh, the human race has become, we, we have got access to everything with the internet now so we have all the art that we could possibly want all the music videos tv shows whatever it's just there it's endless we can just swim through it all has the human population on mass become more sophisticated in their appreciation of an understanding of art and symbols and creative expression in general, like has the tides sort of risen for everyone and the kind of all, all vessels are kind of floating a little bit higher now because it feels like really interesting, really subtle 
powerful imagery is something which people engage with in popular culture quite a lot now. Um, whereas there was definitely a period of time where popular culture was just trash and anything interesting, <laughs> anything interesting had to be from some kind of underground, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know. I just feel like there were these, that's where it's interesting to me. So it's interesting, like the idea of like, okay, you know, lots of people doing dark art, you know, what's it all about? Like, is, is it just a trend or is it this kind of like really interesting thing that's going on where like everyone's looked at so much art and they've they've seen so many things that this sort of imagery kind of like resonates with people it's not they're not just taking it at face value um because that's where that's where things like so for example talking about dark art that's the sort of thing that some people would be turned off by it because they just take it at face value and they don't yeah. they don't kind of look for the sort of I don't know the deeper meanings in it that might be you know it's like it's like when I use the example of Metallica there are probably people that just go like oh no this is aggressive evil music and then you've got people that kind of <laughs> listen to it and go oh no this is a really really interesting song about you know like I don't know the struggles of like war veterans it's like an anti-war song or this might be like an anti-racist song but people just judge it on its aesthetic. They go, "This is aggressive and loud. It must be bad." So that's the kind of that's the kind of dynamic. Because because I, I feel like a lot of the time, dark dark art is is um, doing a lot of good, but it just gets gets a bad response sometimes from people because they don't they they just think that this is just an evil thing that they're looking at. <laughs> no no i agree and actually so i very much agree because there's a, a really interesting clothing company um i think they're called blau cabal okay. um and they create really interesting t-shirts and you know prints even and their imagery is occult imagery but like that really fascinates me because you know some people would be very turned off by that and some people would be like you know very very wary of that but at the same yeah. time you know it's like it's also really interesting for me. I think it's great. I think it's super fascinating. And actually, I'd love to interview them because it'd be really interesting to talk about that. Yeah. But I think you know, stuff like that's interesting. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree. And I just think, I just think, you know, the idea of good and bad and what's, you know, I mean, yeah, and what's, you know, dark and light, I guess, is, you know, very relative to the person viewing it and relative to their own life experiences, you know, because. Yeah. It, the, the same way that you know pe you know some people embrace death other people's don't say so, like you know just like that i guess you know i think um i mean do you pref do you like the term dark art and do you like your work being labeled i think that it's a lot to say that i like it that would be like <laughs> yeah. that would be that wouldn't necessarily be true if i said that i like it if i positively like it but i don't care enough to like try to you know, i wouldn't try to <laughs> okay. like, i wouldn't try to like go like oh no i hate it and, like it's not inaccurate um but it's not like as a term it's not as exciting for me as maybe something a little bit more nuanced or um you know, there might be there might be way, ways of describing it that I prefer. Let's put it that way, but I don't think that it's an accurate term. Yeah, um, and, and I definitely think that there's something about the darkness, which is you know like um, in, intriguing and sort of you know, it's, it's not it's 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 something that I'm fine with. I'm okay with it. Yeah, the only reason I ask is when I was creating these interview questions uh, or the notes, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking like I was trying to. I was thinking about how I was going to talk about your work mm. and the whole idea of, you know, quote unquote dark art. And I was like, you know, maybe he won't be okay with that. Maybe he'll be really hateful of the fact that oh, that's the way I refer to it because I think it can be quite reductive, like very reductive, and it can be a, a huge true, umbrella term. True. I mean, I'm I'm not um, a big person for labels, um, yes. but I just think that people hating labels so much 
that's like I think that that's like probably an ego thing because it's like come on um, <laughs> you know what I mean it's just like at the end of the day yeah. people need to have a shorthand way of like referencing stuff you know it'll be like yeah it's, yeah, it's about reference yeah it'll be like if I was saying like I'm just trying to catch the bus and someone wanted to stop me and be like well, technically, that's a va- that's a van. I'd be like, I don't fucking care. Like, I'm, that big vehicle, I want to get in it. You know, it's like I yeah. get it that there's like a, pe- a a pedantic side of people where they want to make sure that things are kind of corrected and stuff. I uh, I don't I I do I definitely can relate to people that people not wanting to feel um like boxed in. Like I yeah. I constantly try to not box myself in so like someone else could come along and uh, and start doing that by coming up with categories and labels and then i'll just be like oh for fuck's sake now i've got to go and do something else to break out of this box that's all me in. <laughs> but then that's okay it's um yeah i mean i i i can understand there probably are people that do really kick off about being labeled in a certain way but it's just like whatever you know like things need to be given a category dark art is probably too broad to be that useful that's my only real criticism of it it's too broad to be useful because it's not enough to say something something's dark it's not enough to say that you're going to necessarily be interested in it like um you know, something could be dark, but it might not appeal to me at all, <laughs> right? So it's like, yeah, that's true. it's like, it's very broad. It's a very, very broad term. There might be ways of, I'm probably not the person to, to, to come up with it, but there might be ways of like, there might be more nuanced terms that are a little bit more. Yeah, I'd say like psychoanalytic, for instance, would be a better way to put it. Psychoanalytic? I see, that's, yes. that, that's interesting. You know, like I hear that, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, that, that's how I describe your work, having spoken yeah, to you about I kind of like, um, I'll tell you, like, certain things that if someone said it to me, I'll be like, okay, now I'm interested. So if someone was telling me about, uh, like, for example, esoteric art, I'll be like, hmm. Oh, yeah. Let me absolutely. check that out. Yeah, absolutely. Because I like, yeah. um, I like oblique symbolism i like things that don't make it obvious what they're trying to say uh, i like the idea of work that has symbol symbolism in it but they're not trying to go out of their way to make it make sense they're just like coming from the subconscious they're putting symbols out there and they're giving people food for thought and it's something to look at and take away with you you know and that's that's so having said that so what do you think the purpose of art is um i think there is no purpose to it i think that people um people in general as a product of human evolution uh they think about things in a way which is backwards to the reality or uh, 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 it's like people asking themselves, you know, what's the meaning of life, you know, um, which no one's ever able to answer, but then maybe that's just like the wrong question. You know, maybe there's no meaning to it at all. Um, and maybe that's not really what the question is supposed to be. It's like, uh, what's the purpose of art? It's like, you know, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't have the answer to it. I don't think I have the answer to any of these things. I'm not, I'm not special, <laughs> but it's like, you know, maybe the whole way of this whole way of thinking is the wrong way around like is there a purpose maybe it's maybe it's the only thing that doesn't have a purpose and that's exactly why it's important that's exactly why it's important maybe it's like a paradox maybe its purpose is to be the only thing that exists without purpose you know maybe it's like um just interesting you know, maybe if someone's building like a door, they know why they're building it. And that's exactly why 
someone else goes and builds something that has absolutely no purpose of any kind just because it makes everyone kind of question everything right so you've got one guy over here is making a door and everyone just looks and goes okay that guy's making a door that door is there to open and close when you want to walk through and then you go so what's this guy over here making it's just a thing that does nothing and then you could spend your whole life talking to him about why the fuck did you do that and it's just like i don't know i just did it <laughs> it's just like that's the whole that's the whole reason it's there it doesn't need a reason it's 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 May, it may be one of the only things that doesn't need a reason to be. That's a, a really good take. That's a really good take on it, I think. Um, and it's actually a really interesting way to look at it because you're right. No, you're right. Uh, does it necessarily? Yeah. No, you're just right. That's a good, a good take. People feeling like they need um, to justify why they're doing what they're doing when they're doing art is one of the biggest hurdles to making good art i think it's it's just not what it, it it's about it's like don't worry about it just do it do it because you feel if, if you are feeling an urge to do it do it it's not hurting anyone you know it's not like some, that's true. No, that's very true. There are people out there that have urges and they're very, very, very damaging to other people. There are people who are abusive or violent. Um, and that's just really, really bad for the for everyone involved. And those people shouldn't just do what their urge urges tell them to do, right? But then if your urge is to like make a sculpture then I just don't think that you need to spend even five seconds questioning like whether or not the world needs this or whether or not, you know, like whether or not it's the right thing to do. It's like, look, there's a, you can't, you can't necessarily pinpoint where the urge came from. There's absolutely no harm in just doing it. And then, you know what, when you sell work, uh, for those people that do sell work, then at that point in time, it, it, you know, as far as living in a capitalist society, there, now there's no no one can argue that, that it has value because someone's come along and bought it from you. So now you can actually say, well, actually, this paid for me to like you know, eat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you can just make absolutely. make whatever bullshit you want to make and then get paid for it and then eat. So now who can say anything bad about that, <laughs> you know? And you don't have to ever explain to anyone why you did it. You don't have to, it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to have a story. It doesn't have to be logical. It doesn't have to have any of these things that people think it has to have. Like that's exactly where people go wrong. It's just like you, you felt the need to do it, you did it. Um, and then all of the um, all of the evaluation of the work comes after the do doing of the work. So it's like sifting through the debris after the fire. You know, it's like look, yeah, that that's fine. Go, go, that's interesting. Having a conversation afterwards about like, well, what the fuck? Like, what were you trying to do? And you can be like, actually, you know what? That's a good conversation. Let's have that conversation. But <laughs> but to to but to not do it because you feel like you can't like logically explain what you're trying to do. For example, that's like that's the enemy of of creativity in a way. It's just like you're basically just like groping out at the universe, like looking for like reaching into like unknown areas and just seeing what you come up with and then it might just be nonsense but then it might be like the new most insane amazing thing that someone's come up with you know like i say my my favorite music artists are people that just make this like like the music is just doesn't follow any traditional musical structure or anything like that you know it's like someone might listen to it and just go that's just noise but then yeah absolutely yeah 
So go back to something you said earlier. You said earlier that you want to make images that are more darker and more aggressive. Yeah. But I'm actually really curious as opposed to, do you think that there are any kind of limits to what you can actually create with art? And are there any kind of ideas and stuff you'd want to do that because of it might be, say, controversial or maybe a bit too dark or a bit too, you know, on the nose for some people that you wouldn't do it? Um. You know, that's an interesting point. So I would say that everyone's got their own threshold for what is and is not in good taste or bad taste. So yeah. so I might think it's fine to do whatever I do and then someone else might come along and be like, fuck that. You know that's too much and i might look at what someone else has done and go that's too much i don't like it um but i'm doing what i want so i don't really want to do more than what i am doing i'm doing what i want so i don't really have the urge to do like a, you know like the like the myra hindley painting that was like made from like yeah, yeah, children's yeah, yeah. handprints or whatever handprints yeah uh, i don't i didn't like that <laughs> when i saw it i didn't like it no no um i mean is am i missing the point probably <laughs> right there are loads of things where i've missed the point i didn't like it i was talking about metallica earlier i remember hating metallica not liking it now i love it so you know like there are things that you will be turned off by there's things that you'll be turned on by i don't like that my hindu painting and it feels like it's in bad taste to me that's my gut instinct it just feels like it's in bad taste but i because i was turned off by it i didn't really look into it because you tend to look into things that you are i suppose attracted to right so yeah, there course. are artists that i saw their work and i was like oh my god and i immediately went and read all about their work and when i saw that i was like oh i fucking don't like that and i just didn't want to read about it or hear about it I just didn't like it um, but what i didn't do is i didn't turn up at the gallery and like vandalize it which is what someone did um oh yeah well yeah and so that is kind of where my line is like i don't I don't go out there like all self-righteous trying to shut down what people do um, and like be that kind of loud and dumb kind of person that's just there trying to shut down other people's expression. Um, but that doesn't mean that I like everything I see. There are lots of things that I don't like. Um, and I, I don't personally feel like I want to do something that is going to offend or upset people. And I don't really feel like the things that I do would. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, like, like I have had comments from people like, um, because I love, they're like, I just love what I love. And, and, it, and it's all like, it's totally nourishing my soul. And so that's just what I do. So, for example, I really love um, B uh, Bukowski's poems. And like I, yes. every now and then I'll put like a Bukowski quote like underneath like one of my uh, drawings because it's all like Bukowski inspires me. And sometimes, sometimes his poems like not always, but sometimes I feel like they kind of tie in with what I've drawn. And then I've had like, you know, a, you know, someone comment to me like saying, oh no, I think that's a, a really negative thing to put out there. And I'll be like, well, okay, you don't, I don't know. That's my, I like Bukowski. <laughs> and I, I thought it was cool that he was like, but I see things in this weird abstract way. So I don't take things literally. So when I say, when I see Bukowski say like, you know, um, I don't know, when I see, see Bukowski talk, talking about 
um, killing yourself. Like, I don't think he's telling people to kill themselves, if that makes sense. I feel like he's talking yeah. about something more abstract, like, in terms of, like, I don't know, maybe uh, torturing yourself. He's being almost, like, hyperbolic, talking about, like, t- torturing yourself on a daily basis. He's talking about, like, inner turmoil. He's not saying, go and kill yourself. And I do think that there is, like, there, there is a problem with people being very literal, literally minded people. Yeah, absolutely. They, they find it hard to view certain creative works because the, I take it for granted when I'm looking at cre- like creative work that I'm looking at sort of a, a sort of metaphorical kind of expression. There's like there are meta messages. And there are kind of abstract ideas kind of that can't be said literally. And the only way to say them might be through metaphor or through like analogies or through, I don't know, some kind of strange storytelling or whatever. And I just take it for granted because I get it. I take it for granted that other people get it. And then like there's every opportunity, there's every possibility that they don't. <laughs> And so people, Absolutely. people are going to get upset. Whatever, man. You know, unless they decide to, uh, like, become the next Nazi party and like make it impossible for people to make art that is not what they agree with, they they can't bother me. You know, if people don't like it. But yeah, I mean, I also feel like um, the vast. But I don't, I don't think that my work is benign, but I do think that it's not like controversial in any way. I'm not, I don't like flirt with controversy. I use like oblique ancient symbols. And so the, 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 the layers that I give my work is like, if you don't get symbolism, I've tried my best to make it visually beautiful. And so taste comes into it. Like if it's just not to your taste, then, then you could just move on. But then if, and that's fine. But then if it is to your taste, then you could be like, well, I don't really understand what the fuck this is, but it looks nice. Right. <laughs> and then that's fine because then it's like, then you can enjoy it. And that's the, that's where I've let, that's how I've chosen to layer the work because I want to like bring some kind of like pleasure to people's lives, you know? So if if they just if they just think it looks nice, they just want it on all because it looks nice, then that's a, that's a fucking good good day's work for me. And then if somebody looks at it and they kind of like they they are able to like see the 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 connect with the symbolism and they actually kind of like get what I was trying to do, then that's pretty cool. And um, you know, if people don't, if people can't articulate why they connect with it, but they know that they feel they connect with it, that's even better. That's my favorite. That's what I want. I think that's very true. And I, and I think I respect that stance that, you know, you're just, you're very conscious that people may like it and people may not like it, but either way, you're creating it for yourself. So, you know, in, in the grand scheme of it, it doesn't matter. Um, I respect that a lot. I think it's a, it's a great mentality to be in as well, though, because it means that when you're creating work, you don't have to, you don't have any pressure on yourself. You're not putting that self imposed pressure to, to create stuff people are going to like or to create stuff that, you know, is going to be great. It's just you're creating it to create it for the simple joy of creating. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I think that, like, um, I think it's really important for people to find a um, find I don't know if hobby is the right word but find something that they can do regularly that is challenging enough to push them but is achievable enough to like not be too daunting and to make you feel like defeated and so just the right amount of challenge 
everyone's th- every, everyone's got a different thing that they're interested in and a different level that they're at with that thing but for people to have that right amount of of challenge that they can feel completely engaged in what they're doing is really 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 good for just i just think it's good for for like mental health so you could be um i don't know you might be that the thing that you find just the right level of challenge and it's completely engaging might be that i don't know whatever like you're a mechanic and that that's just really really interesting to you now while you're working you start to forget yourself because you know you have music on and you might be singing along and you're doing your work and in the in that sort of flow state where you're working and you forget yourself that is where you release all of your mental pressure for a bit because you've just forgotten about all the things which are making you feel like tense and that's also when you're doing your best work because your your brain goes somewhere else your subconscious the subconscious is like that's the genius part of everyone's got everyone's got a genius subconscious and then uh we all have this like really really limiting conscious brain that's sort of like sitting on top and like i think really really clever people are people that are most able to like figure out how to stand aside and let their subconscious run the show you know um but then some people just by nature of their temperament just by not caring like they they have a shortcut straight to genius because they just they just freed up and they just do what they want you know and that's where you can you can get that's why you know like every child's is 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 an artist you know because they're just out there just expressing themselves and it's like and and that's another reason why i think it's really good when people um like have lucid dreams and then they try to like paint from lucid dreams is because yeah that's your subconscious your subconscious is doing its thing like your subconscious has got it figured out it's taking in way 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 more information than your conscious brain could and then when you're sleeping i guess you're just sort of like i don't know what the fuck is going on when you're sleeping it's like, <laughs> the <laughs> madness and that's probably where the best ideas are all going on but we've uh, maybe we could get them um but yeah i don't know i'm sorry if i'm going on, on some too many tangents just uh no yeah. no honestly that's no problem i personally i really love it so one thing that strikes me as really interesting is that you create both traditional art and also digital art um, and I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about kind of why you decided to do that and kind of the benefits and drawbacks like that both like each kind of method has. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So I um, I think the reason why I did so much traditional art was because of the way I was uh pretty like uh not well off at all growing up and didn't have money and my mum was moving house all the time so um it was just really unsettled all the time and drawing is just like something that you could as i say you could just do with a pen and paper so i actually was trying to make it work when I was young and I was sort of figuring out how can I do this, I was trying to make it work with the absolute bare minimum of materials. So I was sort of trying to make my turn a weakness into a strength because a lot of people that I knew growing up, they had a different situation where it was like they could have any, anything that they wanted would be provided for them so they get all the art materials they want or they you know that it would be like a big thing that their families would be like super excited for them and they you know would get uh like okay what do you need like okay you need to drive down do you want to rent out a space or do an installation got this you know this okay we need to get these materials for you or whatever and like it was it's unimaginable for me to have ever had that kind of level of like access to materials or anything like that so i could have i suppose seen that as being 
like a massive drawback. Um, but then I thought to myself, you know what? Like, why don't I just get some like pens and just make it like that? That's my thing. That's what I do. I do like sort of these re like really intensely detailed pen drawings. And you know, if I can't make it work doing pen drawings maybe that's because I can't make it work doing anything because it comes down to like the same principles at the end of the day which is like having an original idea and executing it well and, and um you know getting it out there and, and, and having your own unique voice or whatever so actually the more I thought about it it's like I'm not in any way at, at a disadvantage if I was just, if I'm just the guy that does pen drawings, you know? So um, I did that so much. Like there are very few people that if you met me, like, I don't know, at the age of about 25, there are very few 25 year olds that you ever meet in your life that have spent the amount of time I had spent drawing. Like, it's just something that I have done so much. Um, and that has given me, like, a really, really, really good foundation to build, to, to build on once I got to a situation where actually I can, I can get materials and do other things, you know? And then um, when it came to living in um living in london and being in I, i'm not used to that kind of there's not much space in london you know i'm from the <laughs> yeah. countryside yeah absolutely so i'm from a place where you oh, okay like, you could go out and like have like the beach or like a field and you have a lot of space and i i love nature and i love being around like animals and like trees and all of these like you know flowers and everything right and uh, being restricted being in like pokey little flats in london it's really 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 hard to um there's like a psychological barrier to to like drawing with a with a, with a pen or a pencil let alone a piece of charcoal and like a big like you know on a big piece of paper or something um because you're kind of having to confront the like physical what like very limited physical space around you in order to like set yourself up and start every time and you just sort of in a way it just like i always find myself not wanting to do it so i decided to get uh, iPad Pro for this with an Apple Pencil for the sole reason of trying to get myself back into my passion of drawing because I haven't done it for so long. So that's where I came from with that. And I, at this point in time, when I decided to do that, I had lots of experience as a graphic designer, like working for companies like for, for years doing design and branding and things like that so i'm very familiar with using like photoshop and illustrator and InDesign, all that kind of stuff and um so basically i got this i, I got this <laughs> ipad pro and i got procreate as well as like all the adobe suite um and I, and procreate is only a fiber and it's uh better in my opinion than oh, is uh, it's it's the best like my personal favorite um digital illustration i suppose digital art app that i've come across so far like i think it's amazing like i, I love photoshop illustration in design in my job as a graphic designer but this is like something else it's just feels so much like you're just drawing us on, on a never-ending sketch pad basically and it's just super, super, super amazing. So I was so happy with that. Um, and then I, I just kind of, you know, made it a little thing that I would do at, while I'm at home every now and then. I'd pick, or I'd carry, I was carrying my iPad around my bag with me everywhere I went in the hope that I would actually like pick it up and use it. And I think I've been 
an entire year went by and I didn't use it once. And I was like, that is a waste of money. Paid like whatever that cost, like a grand. And I haven't used it at all. And then lockdown happened. And I'm suddenly stuck at home all the time. And so I just started using it. And um, it became like, it is so unbelievably sat satisfying. Someone like me that likes to draw, like, I have to say, the things that I love about the drawing, pretty much it's all there in the digital drawings too. Because what I love is I love seeing the human touch and all of the little pen marks or the brush strokes and how they were placed and why they were placed. And it gets you into the decision making and the mindset of the person that made it. Um, it's not the same. It's not the same as like a painting where you can have like the texture of the paint or you can have like the impasto kind of painting technique. You know, it's not the same. Uh, process as like the smell of like when you're using paint and things like that but the but but it's it's something else but it's really really good it's really good and I have to say like as someone who's a, who's a, for sure a traditionalist I have I have definitely been converted by by using an iPad with an Apple pencil on Procreate that is super satisfying, um, but it's it's not like um, it's not the same. So I still do drawings and paintings. I still do them. You know, I just do. I but I I just do what I feel like I want to do. That's it. I don't make a rule and then torture myself and discipline myself to follow it. I wouldn't tell myself I'm going to do a painting. Um, and then if I feel like I'm picking up the iPad and trying to draw the iPad, I go, no, no, you're supposed to be doing a painting. Like, I just do what I want. So it will just burst out of me. Like a, a painting will just will just burst out of me when it when it needs to happen, it will happen. And I just make sure that I've got the materials around. So I've always got canvases and paints around. Um, and I've always got the iPad around. And I've always got sketchbooks and pencils and pens around. So it's all it's all just different mediums as far as I'm concerned, and they all have their pros and cons. Because yeah, I was just really interested personally because for me, it's like we've we've seen a, a quite a rise, like a quite a meteoric rise in digital art recently in the last few years, and I think yeah. um, you know there's a huge debate about whether it's going to take over traditional art or if it's like you know deemed as kind of um, what's the word for it like I guess kind of as worthy I don't know worthy is the right word but you know it, it, mm. it doesn't seem to be quite considered as on par as traditional art and I kind of wonder what your stance is on that um I think that people are probably wrong in that perception <laughs> but I don't have an issue with it I think it's fine that's how they feel but so for a lot of it just comes down for down to people thinking that certain things are supposed to be like you know a painting is supposed to be x or a drawing is supposed to be yeah, that's x. True. and that's exactly the kind of thinking that i don't believe in um so you know again like i like to talk about music quite a lot so um i love certain types of electronic music I just love it. I love it so much. And I listen to it on my headphones and it's fucking great. And I don't <laughs> ever feel the need to, I have never really felt the need to go and see those artists live. It's not something that I was ever compelled to do, but I'm totally interested in going to see like someone who's like a really good folk singer live. Um, for example, but I might be less inclined to listen to them on my headphones. And like, it's not like the starting place shouldn't be like me thinking this is wrong and therefore it shouldn't be. The starting, the starting place should just be I'm doing what I feel like I want to do. So 
I feel like I want to put my headphones on and listen to this music. And that's it. And then the question of like, why did I enjoy doing that? Or why did I want to do that comes afterwards. And, uh, you know, those music artists, they might not be able to play a musical instrument at all, but they've, crea- they've yes. created a musical experience, which is, even if no one else in the world likes it, I like it. Like, I absolutely love it. And I'm having the best time putting headphones on and listening to it. So it doesn't need to exist in any other form because it's already served a function way, way beyond what most people would ever, like I probably never made anything that's had such a utility as these music artists that have given so many people so many hours of pleasure listening. Like people get lost listening to it. And it doesn't exist in the form of a person with a guitar in a room for the people singing along. It doesn't have words. It doesn't have vocals. It has no musical instruments in it. Um, But it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to. It's not what it's there to do. So when it comes to, you know, like a painting, like a digital painting, is not the same as you know i would i would totally object if someone said it's the same i'll be like well that's that's clearly a full statement they're not the same (laughs) but that doesn't mean that one has more value than the other you know a painting on a canvas is one thing a painting that exists digitally is another and um the whole kind of the fact that as a human species, we have created another another category of art. Is that's the whole that's creativity at work. People have come up with this whole thing, which conceptually no one could have even imagined in the time of like Michelangelo. You know, like who would have thought that there was such a thing as an iPad um, and uh, a digital painting it wasn't it doesn't make sense even the idea of a printer wouldn't have made sense to somebody from you know from those days so it's like um you know it's just it's it's a type of it's a it's progress and um you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all and people who have that kind of like like progressive kind of innovative mindset they're not they're they're not bothered like david hockney is however old he is he's he's certainly in his old age now and he was before he was way before me he was the ipad uh painter you know like he's a forward thinking person and that's exactly why he's a well well deserved uh you know um kind of iconic artist that's that's very successful and well-known because he's got that type of mindset and people anyone that's just involved in trying to hold things back they're just they're gonna just all be like a footnote in history when everyone talks about you know it's like people talking about cassettes and all the people that got upset when cassettes were invented and then cds and then mp3s and it's just like really you know everyone's acting like (laughs) mp3s have come along and now music's gonna be destroyed so i just see it as, as just it's just more or less the same thing no so i think it's great i think that's, that's a obvious argument to have and that's the way i would hope you say it, as somebody who creates you know using both methods um absolutely i think that's cool and that's great so so I was looking through your Tumblr, as I said earlier, um, and what really struck me, I know it's like older stuff, um, but what really interested me was your animated digital painting and your general animations, right. um, particularly the one of the rows, which is the 48 frames in Procreate. And I was just super curious as to your thoughts and opinions on animation and like the future of the static image. Um, I think animation is absolutely fascinating, really interesting um i love the technical side of 
it's all basically to do with psychology and people and the way our brains work and just the limitations of you know the senses and how we see the world that's what it's all all boils down to you know so if you were to make uh you know it's fascinating that people people don't even like say when someone's watching tv they don't even realize that they're really looking at an, an illusion it's lots and lots and lots of still images um and it could be incredibly deceptive um and animation has obviously got that same potential because it's a moving image so it's really 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 interesting i suppose what i'm interested in with animation is perhaps some of the territory that isn't really covered with with film with footage so just pushing boundaries there which i didn't really do in that animation of the that was really because that the, the the flower animation that I did, that was really because I was trying to give myself the biggest challenge I possibly could while I was learning Procreate software. And I just thought to myself, you know what? Like I've got to do a lot of drawing to on this app to learn how to use it. And I also want to do animation at the same time. And if I was just, if I set myself the goal to do this animated flower, if I pull it off, I'll come out of it with a lot of drawing experience and a bit of animation experience as well on on specifically on that app. So yeah, it was kind of like a challenge for myself. And it was just also you only get opportunities to do some stuff like that when you have loads of time. And I was that was the beginning of lockdown when I started that. I had so much time. And to be honest, anything that just gave me um a completely and utterly busy evening one day after the next was uh, was a blessing um and i you know i would have if, if i wasn't doing that i probably would have bought a puzzle or something you know <laughs> like just something that would have just kept me busy yeah, so, right, so yeah. that was kind of where where i came from where, where i was coming from with that and the end result i was super happy with it um put in a really cool and i just kind of you know I, I just have it there as a kind of it's just a study thing that I've done it's just a resource and I can just kind of use it if I need to as a reference um and it's just you know or I can revisit the idea and you know now I've become too busy um because I've ended up getting carried away doing lots of different artwork um projects whereas at that time that was the only thing I was doing so yeah I, I'd like to do more uh, but I think what I'd probably do is be a little bit more abstract or a little bit more kind of uh, imp impressionistic in the way I do it. If I was to do uh, an animated flowers, for example, I would make them way, way more abstract um, because that's more interesting to me right now. So, yeah. Yeah, because I thought it was really interesting, but I thought the interesting part was that how it looked so simple but i already know that that was not simple to make yes um, i think that's what really yeah me about that's it. definitely yeah. um where i am coming from sometimes with my work is that i want it to i want it to feel really natural and just feel really like you know you 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 connect with it when you see it you don't necessarily feel overwhelmed by the complexity of it but um at the same time i do like to set myself a challenge i don't like to do things that are it's just that's my own weird quirks i don't think that it's necessarily a good thing but i don't like to just necessarily do things that are too easy i like to make it hard for myself i don't know why because i just want to be engaged engaged in what i'm doing yeah, so so i want it to be a little bit difficult you know yeah, it's a challenge. You want to challenge yourself whilst you're doing something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, uh, uh, I'm, gl I'm glad glad you felt that way. I mean, I I've, I've got lots of ideas for animations actually um, floating around in my head, and I've got a few that I worked on that I decided not to share. Um, it's just yeah, you know, it's something that I, I mean, what when lockdown started. I didn't want to use Procreate. I wanted to use um, After Effects. I set myself the goal to teach myself to be really good on After Effects, which is basically all about 
well, that's all to do with video editing, but it's it's specifically to do with yeah. certain types of visual effects. It's not it's not necessarily like um, editing a film. It's more like you know you might have a really really short little bit of video that just looks really incredible, you know, um, with loads of slick effects in it. And I just thought that that would be a really cool thing to learn, but I found myself more engaged with using Procreate software. Um, so that's what I ended up doing instead. So that's really cool. So how, and that actually makes me super curious. This is like a random question now you just said that. It's like, so how important is it for you to learn new things and new skills and kind of constantly be trying out new things and experimenting? Um, yeah, I think that that's important. I think that's really important. I try to, I have to be conscious of that. I have to think to myself, okay, you know what, go and do this thing, go and learn this thing, because otherwise I would just, I'm so like somebody that would just do what they feel they want to do and just be very kind of, in, it's, it's almost quite self-indulgent. I just do what I want and do that forever and that's yeah. that's kind of you know there are pros and cons to that because it means that i just do a lot of work but at the same time that there's a there's a huge negative side to that which is that i can end up not progressing or not growing so i have to consciously like you, you know use the other side of my brain and go okay stop go and do something else learn this thing and it and you know, I'm trying to train myself to embrace the feeling of 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 knowing nothing and feeling stupid. You know, when you do something new and you feel like an idiot and you don't have that feeling of being like feeling great that you're doing something you know so well, that's a feeling that needs to be embraced because that's when you're pushing yourself into the unknown. And that's absolutely what I want to do more and more. I want to keep on teaching myself new things and uh, exploring you know and so then I could be able to say actually this is what I really love and I, I feel like you know I might be doing something completely different in five years time um, if I've successfully explored the options you know absolutely I think that's a that's a really good mentality to have and one thing I would you know I'm going to suggest you to look into but obviously okay whether you do or don't it's your call but maybe if you look into 3d modeling oh yeah um, and making your images three dimensional as opposed yeah. to two dimensional. I've looked. I, I have put my dipped my toe in that. Um, so yeah. So oh, I do. Okay. I've, but okay. No, I'm not going to be able to get into some kind of elite level of skill there quickly. That's like really really hard. It takes a long time. So uh, I have to sort of give myself time and space to be able to like learn that and enjoy it enjoy it and not pressurize myself so when i started learning cinema 4d um in 2020 during lockdown i was like okay like this is i can see that this is good, how much time this is going to take am i really going to do this while also doing after effects while also learning procreate i was like mm, okay i've got myself a little feeling i've, I've given myself a feel no, for it like i had I, i've used it just to give myself a feel for it i was like okay i can see what what it's about and um, it's it's there for me to return to. Does it interest me as much as like sculpture? No, like I'm actually more interested in sculpture in terms of like my mo main motivation for doing work would be just, I guess, for like scratching an itch, like feeding my own kind of urges and impulses. What do I want to do? And the thought of doing some actual sculpture, not virtual, but actual using some clay, you know, making a sculpture, for example, um, that appeals to me. That really, really appeals to me. Yeah, that, that'd be cool to say. I'd love to do that. Yeah, but I think it's, it's interesting to think about how your work can become three-dimensional from a 2D image. I think that's really interesting. And I think the reason I said 3D modeling is because it's something that I'm, I've really grown an appreciation for yeah, oh yeah. in the last year yeah. or so. 
um, it's something that I've, that I've looked at a lot of, and I'm a bit like, it's so like under recognized because it's like it takes so much time and effort and skill. Mm-hmm. And you know, like most things, people just can't buy it. And it seems like it just, it's just I really, that, interesting. yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just super it's interesting. An amazing, amazing medium. I think it's totally amazing, really, really cool. And some of my favorite artists are people that are using those kind of techniques, you know. Like Beeple Crap, I don't know if you checked out Beeple Crap. Yes, <laughs> I mean, me, me and yeah. my mates have been following yeah. him for a couple of years, and we'd some we'd say to each other, "How do you think this guy's making money? Because he's just putting these images out for free, and then now he's sort of the NFT guy." And it's like, okay, now he's yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> but he deserves it. He's great. He's so good, and yeah, of course. The all is right with the world if people crap is like the biggest story in art right now. That's how I feel because yeah, that's exactly my bag. And I think it's great. Yeah, and I think it's actually great because it brings art into focus. Yeah. I think anything that brings art into focus mm-hmm. in a positive light can mm-hmm. only be a good thing. You know, as long as it's not, you know, negative or derogatory, I think it can only be a good thing because the whole point, I mean, for me, the whole point is to extend the discussion of art. Like that's yeah, the fun yeah. of, of it. And people Be- crap you know. has influenced me yeah. in a certain way he's influenced me hugely because I try to, I don't always succeed, but I try to do dailies and that's because he did that for so long. Yeah. So he was so committed. And I thought to myself, like what I really like about that is the sort of generosity that he's giving people something to look at every day. And as his audience grows, it's like, okay, you've got a million people following you and you're giving them something to look at every day. Now that is like an act of generosity in a way, and and um, pe- it, people respond, people reciprocate. If you give out good energy to people, they they get they most of the time people will give you some, they will reciprocate you some good good vibes back. So it's like he's given so much to the world in terms of making so much so many images that are really interesting and thought-provoking or just like cool or funny or whatever that he deserves to have the world give back to him and just be like there you go like we, we're going to reveal you and pay you money absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah i'm happy about that i like and for me it's perfect it shows you that you know art is valid it is a valid career you know you can make money being an artist mm. you know it's not all starving artists as people like to say so i think that's you know that's a great thing that's only positive yeah ask. yeah yeah true i mean it's hard but you know if people if people tr- treated oh, yeah, art course. like they do um a nine to five job i think that anyone would be able to make money from it and then you obviously get people that are going to be working smarter than others during that time but i think i think that there's a there are a lot of myths surrounding art and a lot of people think that it's just about sitting around and waiting for inspiration to land in your head and they want to give themselves like five days to do nothing so that they can sort of sit think and ponder the world and then do something and then that's where it's like okay that might be that that might be something that works for someone but when people work in a job that pays their bills they work nine to five every day so they get up and they do their job every day and if you have the self-discipline as an artist to do that then i think that the their hard work pays off i really do so i think that someone you know whatever the person's thing is if like say someone's a ceramicist if they decide that they're going to work on ceram you know creating ceramics nine to five every day and they dedicate themselves to it then at, at the end of that they're going to have something that people would be willing to pay money for i think yeah absolutely absolutely i think so and that's you actually broached on a few couple of questions i'm going to ask you later so uh that's actually pretty perfect but i won't ask you now because i want to talk a bit more okay. about your work first but yeah there are definitely topics that i'm okay, definitely going to ask cool. you about later um which is cool which is really cool um very cool so another thing that you did which i was actually really fascinated by is the anamorphic art that you do? Oh yeah, cool. I'm glad you like that. 
<laughs> I was super fascinated by it, like really fascinated by it. And I, I kind of wondered, like, how do you consider, you know, with both your anamorphic art and also the animated digital painting, like how do you think that creating images that kind of make the viewer work harder to see the final image keeps them engaged? Do you think that it, it helps them in terms of um, the engagement they have to have with the work? Um, I suppose I look at it like, you're just you know you're just trying to say something um give some give someone something dif different to what they've already had um so it's, it's not necessarily saying something it's yeah you know, you're giving someone a, an experience that they may not have already had um and also trying to do something new for yourself for your own personal growth that's kind of where where i'm coming from with things i mean i'll try out new things all the time and then uh go no i'm not going to share that because i actually don't there's a there's a huge evaluation stage of looking at what you've done and going okay you know you had a good go but actually no <laughs> this isn't going to go the portfolio of work has to be of a high standard but the um the anamorphic art was just kind of kind of like okay let me um just do some so, something new and maybe that's gonna someone will get a kick out of it you know maybe a couple of people will see it think it was cool and you just don't know how much people will take like, like how much these things will take with people whether they will love it and if people really enthused about it and they really 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 just couldn't get enough then i'd probably um delve into it a little bit deeper and do more of it because it's definitely something which I find really interesting. Um, that being said, I, I didn't do more. I just did that one and left it. So I suppose that that means yeah. that I was happy with it. I was happy with it, which, which is why I shared it and people liked it and that was good. And then um, I just felt like I hadn't really got that much more sort of um i wasn't i wasn't inspired to really do it any, any more than that at least i'm not at the moment and then you know maybe that will sort of come around later and it will just suddenly become the most exciting thing for me but all of these things kind of stack up in the background as kind of potential ideas to explore so you know i might in a month's time just be like oh you know i'm sick of doing what whatever it is i'm working on you know what let me do this go back to this anamorphic thing because I wanted to do a few different types of, of animals because there are what there there are those cylindrical mirrors that you can sort of place on a circular yeah. animal and I was I thought that would be pretty cool so I bought some equipment to do that and then I forgot that I forgot that I ordered it and oh. then, then it, it was <laughs> it must have taken forever to to arrive because it was probably like a month ago that it arrived in the post and I was like Oh yeah, I ordered that. <laughs> I ordered that like four months ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, like wow. at some point in time, it's it's just that it's like a really it's a really 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 super interesting thing, you know, because when you look at animals and you see the effect, it's just you just sort of go, oh, what's, what's actually happening here? You know, what's going on in my brain that makes this work? You know. It was actually really difficult to do as well. It yeah. was like super, super, super difficult. Yeah, but I imagine. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it was. Like, I imagine it was because it, it worked well. Because you know, any wrong move and it mm. wouldn't have worked. So yeah, I no, I imagine it would, that's why I'm impressed by it, and that's why I liked it, and that's why I was like, I oh, dropped the ball on the, on the video because um, I could have done a lot more. I could have made made the video a lot more interesting. I videoed it a little bit um and then i was just like eh, that's enough like i'm not like you know look we've got the idea i didn't want to feel like i was like mil milking it too much but um i do feel like i've got the drawing so anytime i want to make like an interesting little short video clip and share it online or something i can just get that drawing out and then i can sort of set the camera up and move it around but you know it's always there uh, yeah but that's a really interesting yeah, that's always Sorry, there, so I need to go back to if I want to. 
So, so that's really, you said milking it, which is a really interesting way of looking at it. And I think that's kind of an odd thing for you to say for me, because like, why would you milking it? It's something you're doing. Surely, in my mind, surely you'd want to share as much of yeah, it as you can. Yeah, no. Th- um, so that's actually a really yeah, interesting that's, consideration. That's one of the ways in which I'm probably, like, I probably put pressure on myself, is I think, like, don't, don't milk it. Like, you've done something good. Drop, you know, drop that subtly. And, and and just just let it be and move on to the next thing don't do you know because what i could i could make like one really really good drawing and then just go around forever just trying to tell everyone look at this it's great <laughs> you know and i just say i just don't <laughs> like i don't like how that feels i just think to myself do it share it move on that's why when i share work a lot of the time it's just me just going like this is a new piece of work. I don't say anything else. You know? And I don't like do long explanations of like why I did it. Just do it, share it. If there is something behind it, as as I've explained, my kind of reason for the sacred monolith thing anyway, is that I want people to feel dr- like drawn in. So yeah. I've either succeeded or failed, you know. Um, people are going to be hooked and drawn in and attracted to it or they're not and so I don't need to constantly like wave it in people's faces or go go like bend over backwards to explain what I'm trying to do to people I just think you know what do it share it move on <laughs> that's what that's what I'm like you know I think I think that's really refreshing I think that's a really refreshing mentality like it really is. It, it's such a good mentality to have in the current society we have where it's, you know, it is about excess and about flashiness and about, you know, oh, look at all these things I'm doing and look at, you know, the thousand prints I made from this one image that you're having, you know, that's the same image I'm going to keep creating. So I think that's kind of really, it really intrigues me because it's like you've got your own inner limitation, like your own inner threshold where you know that you won't cross and like you just won't cross it. I think, you know, that's well, really I'm, interesting. I do think like, that really interesting. It's going to probably pay off later thinking like that because sort of like when I look in when I look at my so looking at my Instagram for example so I started that in I guess it was December and it's just full of loads and loads of different images and that's what I mean about people crap being like quite an inspiration to me he just did so he made so many new images all the time and they're really really cool but he would just drop it and move on um and that's the kind of that's that's something which i'm inspired by i like the idea of just do it and move on and then don't let myself worry about if people like it or not because i could also go like oh my god it works so hard on that no one likes it <clears throat> just, that doesn't matter yeah that, that's always the danger though because no matter what you're doing art always takes time mm. You know, there's always an element of time you've spent creating something, and and of course you want to you you like to be rewarded, even if it's not financially, but like in terms of views and in terms of engagement. Um, so yeah, so I guess it, you're right. Like it's like it's kind of a, a balance. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what my goal is. Um, you know, I don't know what it's going to pay in what way it's going to pay off. I just know that it's. I just feel that putting in that's, the effort does pay that, off. I just believe in that idea and I just don't I don't know where where that takes me I'm not sure where I end up but that's a great but like, that's the greatest thing though because that means it can take you anywhere and there is no like end goal because there is no end goal so it's um that's a great way to work and I I, I have the exact yeah. same sentiment with what I'm doing is like I don't know where it's going to end up and to be honest that's not my concern my Brilliant. concern is what I'm doing yeah. now and uh like putting in the work yeah you know I guess yeah definitely um, yeah, but I respect that mentality a lot. I respect it a lot because, you know, you could be like, oh, well, I want, you know, my own solo show in London. You know, you could be like, oh, I want this and I want that. And I want, you know, and put like that pressure on yourself to do a certain thing mm. and achieve a certain thing when really it's about, you know, how much am I going to enjoy what I'm doing now? Let's do that. I think that's it's, much more important. Yeah. You know, I'm not, that, important. I'm not that thrilled by the idea of doing an exhibition. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm just not. I'm not sure I care at all. So like if I was to do an exhibition, um, then I would have to stand around and 
talk to people in ways that you know maybe I am not in, like I I may end up having to be fake out of sheer courtesy because I might have had that conversation ten times already, even though it might be an in, it might be an interesting That's conversation true, yeah. to have. It's not it's not going to be doing it for me sort of once I've already had it and then had it again and again and again. So to stand around um, near my work chat, like I'd, I'd want to do an exhibition um, with no obligation to actually go there and be there. Um, yeah, of course, I was going to say, like, I'm pretty sure that there, there are ways to get around that. And I was thinking about that last night, actually, after we finished, well, Botanica this morning, after we finished the first half of the conversation, I actually thought afterwards, I thought, wait, I thought, so what would you do if your exhibit worked? I'd be like, would you be there or not? And I thought, probably not. But then that's kind of, that's the interesting mm. thing. So yeah, I was thinking about that last night. I was actually thinking well, about all the street so artists, say that. You know, I said um, the street I was artists were used to yeah. them. They were always there at their exhibitions. Yeah. Like, I, don't know if, I don't know if people oh, okay. necessarily realised it was them or what the deal was, or if it was just like everyone was, everyone there's cool, so it doesn't matter. They all know who this is. But it'd be like a famous, it'd be like a famous, yeah. uh, street artists that no one knows who they are but they'll just be standing standing there like with yeah. their wife or whatever chatting to people and it's like we all know who they are it's that guy there standing next to his work everyone's buying the work <laughs> it's like that's the artist like there's no question Absolutely. that's the artist he's the, one like, that's, oh. he's the one that's like <laughs> grinning from ear to ear that it's just sold for like 200 grand <laughs> so who do you think it, who do you think that Absolutely. is um yeah so so they do turn up to their exhibitions um, I could, I could remain anonymous, like in terms of how I present myself to the world, um, but turn up to my exhibitions um, and just be a little bit kind of cautious about not not go out of my way to re- introduce myself as the artist to people. But I, of the, course, yeah, for me, the motivation, like the the not going to the exhibition, is more about the fact that I just there's something about that being there that I don't like. I like the idea of just doing the work and then just putting it in front of people and then just everyone just figure it out. You know, like you don't need me there. I've done my bit. I've made it. So if you think it's bad, that's fine. If you think it's good, that's fine. If you, you know, if someone's got some really, really um, pressing questions that they need to ask me, then they can, you know, they can get in touch. It's not that hard to contact me, you know, in this day and age. And I don't necessarily need to be standing around in front of my work to do that. So, yeah, that would probably be. We'll see if I ever get to doing ex- exhibitions. It's not something that I have set as a goal, to be honest at all. I think that's that's great though. I think that's kind of a great thing because I think you know maybe a work might not lend itself well to exhibitions. Maybe there's other other the kind yeah. of ideas and goals. But yeah, I think that's really interesting at that. I don't know. I just think your outlook on everything is very, very fascinating. And I really respect I highly respect it. Um, I you. highly respect it. So just I don't know. Not no, that no, I mean no, anything, yeah. but I highly it's respect really it. Nice of you to say. Um so uh moving on slightly. So COVID nineteen. Mm. I know you've you've spoken about it a little bit here and there, but I just wanted to ask, I asked everybody, obviously, everybody I've interviewed since last November. Um so how has COVID nineteen well, affected you and your work? the work i probably wouldn't have done the work if it wasn't covid19 <laughs> put it that way my lifestyle was working in my job and enjoying the time that i spend outside of my job to feel better about the fact that i'm working and the stresses of work right so that's like just that's very very that's the trap that most people are in um it's just a very typical thing so there's nothing really outstanding about that it's just i was going to work uh i i don't mind my job um it's fine um it's there there are some really nice people that i work with and uh the work does interest me but then then i would finish work and i'd sort of be like okay i would maybe i'll sort of blow some of the money that i've made uh in my salary going to a restaurant or going out drinking or you know whatever it may be socializing or yeah. going away yeah. staying somewhere pleasure, in the yeah. countryside or something um because that's 
what I really enjoy doing. And then um, we we live in um, um, basically, uh, or I should say, I live uh, in in a uh, small uh, flat in London. And when lockdown happened, then suddenly life is a little bit um it's not quite as uh easy to cope with with living in a small flat when you can't go out all the time so yeah of course you you sort of don't realize that you're happy with the balance when you were actually out most of the time and it's like wow i'm in this little place all the time so that's kind of where i started uh, really kind of changing my whole mindset into well what can I do that's productive what can I do that's going to be satisfying for me what's like what what where should I be directing my thoughts right now because I had a whole load of things going on in terms of here are my plans here are my goals here are things I'm working on here are things I'm learning these are things I'm trying to do and then it like absolutely none of them could be pursued anymore it all had to go on pause. So I started thinking hard about how do I want to present my work? What do I actually want my work to be in terms of, you know, my artwork? And I knew that it was something that was missing um, for a few years. So that that's it. So, so COVID is probably the thing which has facilitated me doing it. Like obviously COVID's been an awful thing. I'm not in any way playing down how awful it's been, but it's just that, you know, a personal silver lining for me has been the fact that it's allowed me to do loads of art at home. And I'm happy with that. So like if everything went back to normal tomorrow, I've now made this foundation of, of, you know, this sacred monolith art project. And, you know, I would just be happy. That's like a, that's something which is going on in my life. It just kind of makes me feel a little bit more excited or a bit more engaged in life in general. It just gives me a bit more kind of, you know, a bit of a spring in my step or whatever. So, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually pleased that I've turned that around because I guess I could have sunk into like depression or something, just being stuck in no, stuck indoors yeah very easily but that's it yeah that's the effect it's had i think yeah i think i think that's great because i think um a lot of people have asked that question well everybody have asked that question to really everyone said that it's been obviously it's not obviously it's not a fun time but it's been a pretty positive experience mm-hmm. in terms of their art and their the opportunity to have the time to make mm-hmm. things because i think you know one of the biggest challenges we have as creators mm-hmm. is time it's not having the time yeah. to create things and now we have that time it's kind of it's almost like without trying to trivialize it too much but it's almost like an extended holiday yeah it can um, it can feel like that for sure you know, it's, def- it's definitely you know, um it's definitely for for people yeah i would say for people that want to do art it's definitely a massive um opportunity to have that much time for sure it's a huge 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 opportunity opportunity because i think that a lot of us want to be on our own and focusing on this work, you know? So suddenly you've got the chance to do that. It's interesting. Like, of course, I think it's um, it's important to have that time. I think we don't, you know, day-to-day life, you know, quote-unquote normality, we don't really notice how much time we don't have or how much time we do have. Um, so I think uh, it's been an eye-opener, I think, for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. Um, and it's, you know, it started a lot of careers and it's helped a lot of people. Obviously, a lot of people, it's damaged their livelihoods and it's, it's pretty much ruined a lot of people. But for a lot of other people, it's also really helped. You know, it's both sides of the coin, really. Um, I think for the arts, it's done, a, it's done mostly good. Yeah, it's so, like a boom time for certain types of art. And I think there's the combination of that and social yeah. media and the technology. And that's probably why digital art has become massive um because i just feel like it's going to be it's going to be a golden era that sort of thing you know absolutely 
So I wanted to also talk about uh, your image, Brixton Invasion, for the High Arch 2021. Oh, yeah. um, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk to you about the image itself and also the opportunity. Like, how did you come across the opportunity? What does it entail? And um, how often do you search for I it? don't search for opportunities at all, to be honest. Um, I should. Um, I came across that by chance. And most things that I see, because it's just my personality, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's nice, but I'm not going to bother. Because it's really, really, really hard to take me off of my track. Like, I'm super stu stubborn. Like, I'm, on, I'm in my lane, and I'm doing what I'm doing, and nothing's going to stop me. So I don't really, like, come up for air or look around and see what other things are going on. That's why my work is always following along the same trajectory. But then when I saw that, I thought, that's actually pretty cool because that is kind of very much in the territory of, of the sort of work I'm already doing. And um, I think I might have mentioned yesterday that the sort of paranormal themes and like sci-fi themes are one of yeah. the things which are, are a new thing for me to do in my work. And that's like anything which is new, I want to do more of it. So I thought, okay, well, that's pretty cool. And I'd, where I'd been fairly oblique with that kind of um, imagery, I hadn't been, I hadn't tried to like make anything with a narrative to it or anything like that, or that looks like it's very clearly illustrating an obvious scenario of like an alien invasion or anything like that. It's just, it's just not something that I, I'd done at all. But where this had turned up as a competition, and it was the theme was if it came from out from outer space, I thought, well, that's my opportunity to just for once be really literal about this sci-fi theme that I've got. And I like the idea that there's at least one image in my portfolio of work that explicitly is, you know, these are aliens, you know, because. Because I've alluded to oh, it um, in, in various ways, so it's just it was just a nice opportunity for me to be like very unsubtle, um, and I thought that's also the sort of thing which probably would do well in a competition because it's just clearly what it says on the tin, and hmm. yeah, so it was just it just kind of. Uh, fit, it really fit with my agenda at that moment in time in terms of what I wanted to do. So that's it. So I went ahead and did this kind of, uh, I, I got to put into practice, you know, these weird alien kind of looking creatures that I've been drawing in an actual scenario. Like it was like testing the, uh, how well does this actually work as an alien? Because <laughs> I'd made these kind of weird sort of, jellyfish skull creatures <clears throat> and jellyfish octopus creatures um, which is like you know i'm not the first person to do it by by any means um, but i've done it in my own way and and i was kind of happy with it i hadn't contextualized it really so yeah i thought okay let me just be really really obvious about that and let me have a bunch of them all just fucking moving through a place that you could relate to as being somewhere on earth. And that was another opportunity because I have been getting more and more interested in the aesthetic of like neglected and eroded and vandalized um, human kind of areas of, 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 cities and, and towns and things like that so you know i had been kind of interested in in studying a kind of really heavily tagged up graffiti wall um and i've been painting phone boxes with graffiti on them <clears throat> yes yeah that sounds like an awesome yeah, so yeah, i was just absolutely. like okay this is a chance for me to do like when there are about five things happening at once and they're all what I want to do, then I've got uh, that. I've get, I give myself the green light to put the effort in, you know. So I thought, okay, cool, let's do it. Let's let's find a really, really, really good um, sort of setting 
and then go out of my way to make the best fucking alien jellyfish things, uh, whatever they are, and have a, and have them like really <laughs> taking over. And I just, I just, uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Actually, I really like the image. Um, you know, it's again, I like to just do something new. So it's sort of, I have, I had been trying to make scenes like. I think I've done sort of three little, created three little scenes in my work in maybe the month leading up to that, because I just felt like I haven't really done that. So that's something I should do. So I'd met, I'd, you know, I had like little skeleton creatures, like pulling someone out of a grave. And I had some skeletons on a phone, hanging around a phone box. And there was like one riding on the back of a four uh, tiger. So I'd kind of set myself up to sort of, okay, cool, I can do a scene um, as well. So, so yeah, it, it was it was perfect. I really, 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 really enjoyed doing it. And I think the competition's really cool. Like I have to say, the people that did that competition obviously know how to do these things the right way to appeal to artists. Like they must have some artists in their team um, because they've given yeah, just the right amount of, inspiration without limitation you know and that's the the choice of subject matter is like really 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 uh i don't know it's cool i just like it yeah yeah i like that uh, yeah i thought it was really interesting it was interesting to see how your work may change if you were going to put into a competition yeah. as opposed to what you would normally create and also yeah. just and also just kind of the idea of of working to a brief or working to something that's a mm. little bit more restricted than you normally would have necessarily worked. I think that's really cool. And I think it's nice to see. And I, I like the image. I was very Yeah, interested. yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, an um, interesting one. Yeah. For sure. Um yeah, no, I, I'm uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I know you touched about I touched upon it earlier because there's quite a few things you touched upon that um I definitely mm -hmm. want to ask you a bit more in depth about. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is your creative process and um how often do you show um, the process behind your images? i show the process behind my images a lot um i might have done that a little bit less since using procreate i suppose because it doesn't excite me quite as much in terms of showing the process when it's digital um but when if i'm doing a painting or a drawing <clears throat> that's not digital um nine out of ten times i will have like a little video of how i make it and stuff like that but i don't do that as in depth as i could i could go all the way from the beginning and be like okay this is a blank page and this is how i'm thinking about it before i start and here are my materials and here's how i set it up that's probably what i should do um there you go. That comes back to that thing you were talking about yesterday to do with like tutoring or teaching. It would be quite cool to do to do something like yeah. that. I think I did have it in my mind when I started the Sacred Monolith thing to have some kind of online tutorials thing going on. And I feel like that is something that I I really should do. Like it, it, again, it's like what I was saying about people crap. Sort of if you're generous with the world and you give people a lot to sort of soak in, then, you know, you get a lot back. So it would be probably uh, one of the best things that I can do actually for me to make tutorial videos. Um, but I'm currently trying to, I'm currently working to try to keep myself sane um, while in a small flat. So it's not really, it's not yeah, really, probably not really tutorial time yet when i'm uh you know when i'm set up in a studio that is more kind of i've, I've got the environment exactly how i want it that's probably when i'll do it because then it's just all of the kind of thing elements will be there <clears throat> so yeah i will do that i will do that yeah absolutely yeah absolutely well i'm interested to see that absolutely i'm cool. certainly interested to do that and i think it's um it's just interesting. I just love seeing personally. I love seeing the process of art. Mm. I know not everybody does, um, and I think a lot of the time people think that 
you know, showing the process of their work will take away the magic of the work or it will ruin the things they're going to say or the things they're trying to say with their work. But I think for something like your work, I think it would work nicely. Um, yeah, I just think I think it's always nice to see the process yeah, that goes into yeah. art because I think it's, it's too easy just to see an image on Instagram and be like, okay, that's cool. But you don't understand what it took to get to that point. Yeah, I, th- I actually really want to um, do um, a sort of a big circular uh, kind of skull mandala, mandala design thing and um, I have had this in my head for ages in all with the uh, pen drawing and I want to actually start off by getting the skull in front of me and a sketchbook and doing the st- study of that skull and that's like a whole thing in itself, which I then use as the reference to do the do the larger piece, you know. And so you sort of start, the tutorial would be like starting really from scratch. Like I'm going to show you how I do my, ref, make my references for my larger piece. You know, you know what I mean? So it'd be like, this is, this is the root yeah, of, of it. So it's like, here's the thing in front of me. I'm sat here, I'm drawing it. Now I've drawn this reference. Now I take this reference and then I go to this larger piece of paper or canvas, and now I use this as a reference to do this larger design. Um, and then that's something to take for yeah. ages. So, yeah, take so ages showing, yeah. to do. <laughs> it take ages to. But like, that's yeah. the fun of it, though. Yeah. When you said that, I just thought, you know what? Like yeah. that'd be so cool to see. And I was just be exciting to see what you know what people could create with the. I'm really into kind of the, the idea. Of, um, I think I mentioned yesterday, Carl Jung. I'm really into the idea of uh, individuation. Yeah like the idea that a person is always able to sort of grow and that there are there's something in your psyche that is you know you're not in control of it but it's kind of calling out that it wants something like you want there's something that you want and it's hard to decode what your subconscious is telling you like the subconscious is telling you that it wants something and you have to try to give that to yourself if you can and in a in a dream world, we would all be able to uh, at any given moment know what it is that we need to give ourselves, and then give it to ourselves. So, so whether it's yeah, of you know, let's say that my having a full time job, that's fine as long as it's on some level feeding my soul with something that it needs. And the more most important thing is that I decode like my own you know my own self and re- figure out what is it that I actually want <laughs> like what is it that I actually need um and I could easily um get a, a flawed idea in my head and spend a lot of time on something that actually isn't what I need so I could end up thinking that drawing every day is what what my my soul needs because i've got these ideas about how important it is to be creative and things like that but i might be mistaken and it might actually not be what i should do maybe i should maybe the thing that i'm supposed to do maybe i'm more likely to find it in the job that i didn't want to be in you know so so you just don't know like i do think that it's interesting to um just try to figure those things out and and um and see what happens so yeah if i had like absolutely no if i if i was just given total freedom to just do whatever i want <clears throat> given all the resources and the space and the money i actually have no idea what i would do i don't know i think that it would i would hope that i would deal with that really really well and be uh, be smart about it but i might not end up painting or drawing i might end up just reading you know i don't know it's just like oh, yeah, i don't absolutely. know i don't know <laughs> absolutely. So I, I guess it's just a case of like wherever you find yourself you sort of step back reevaluate and think okay what is it i actually really want to do right now so um again that might be one of the reasons why it's a bit of a blessing being locked inside for a year because 
that made me dr- yeah, draw. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say. You know? Yeah, I think there's a there's a lot to be said for restrictions and a lot to be said for um, finding some kind of freedom and constraint. Mm-hmm. I think that's um, yeah. there's a lot to be said for that. I think you, we need, as much as we don't want them, but we do need boundaries mm-hmm. to keep us focused on the things we like. Because you're right, like, like you're right. If I had all the time in the world to do anything, I would literally probably just read all the time. Yeah, I would love to do that. I probably just interview yeah, everybody probably... every day. Probably doing like an interview every day, which would be no, a bad well, idea. Cool. But yeah, you know, like yeah, there's things you're doing. That's what you enjoy. Though. That's really cool. No. I mean, yeah, I probably read. I don't get to read, and I have these weird. I mean, like, so there was a time in my life where I, and I, can't, I don't know why this happened, but I like I really, really wanted to learn to play guitar properly, and I ended up hmm. only managing to commit to it when I stopped listening to music. I had to sacrifice listening to music to play guitar. And I have no idea why that happened, but then I I probably played guitar for like a year and just wasn't listening to music at all. You know, where music was always really, really hugely important to me and I listened to it all the time. And then I had to somehow I had to take that out for like it drove me to like try to be good at guitar because I wanted to listen to myself play. Or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe I, I don't know what it was. But then when I when I decided, you know, oh, this is actually stressing me out. Like I'm spending so much time pushing myself to try to learn and be better at this. Um, let me put it down. And then I just started listening to music again. And then I didn't pick up the guitar again. It's just like that. It's just this weird kind of. I I don't know why. And I I couldn't tell you what made me make that like weird choice to do that. And but it worked. And so, yeah, I have no idea what would happen if I was put in a situation where I can, I have everything I want and I can do whatever I want. Uh, and my best guess is that I would probably, quite possibly, just read. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's that's a really interesting concept because I think maybe maybe we're more limited than we give ourselves credit for. Maybe we can only process doing so many things at once so really to you know to learn a new skill you do have to lose something i think that's mm. that's actually a really interesting concept. yeah that's that's um, yeah that is really interesting i do think that there is something to be said for that i mean i just i think that you have to calibrate your brain uh towards a goal and i think that that happens over time so for example where i went from not doing any drawing at all to doing drawing every day um there was a huge mental shift that had to happen um and it probably went it probably took like a month of me trying to make myself draw and then falling asleep and while i'm asleep like maybe my brain is like reshaping its focus and then i wake up and i'm (laughs) a little bit better doing that effectively than i was the day before but still not quite what i used to be and then i'd fall asleep again and then over maybe like a month you kind of find yourself like sharpening your mind and focus to the point where you are suddenly really productive but all of a sudden one day it's like wow i'm just working all the time um so i don't know you have to kind of yeah you kind of adapt your your focus i suppose your brain that concludes the second part my conversation with sacred modeling thank you very much for listening if you have any questions or comments about it please send me an email at the flying through bowl at gmail.com or via social media sites such as instagram twitter and facebook the flying through bowl audio interviews can be found on a variety of sites such as spotify youtube apple music or whatever you listen to podcasts if you'd like to support the platform please consider subscribing or sharing this interview with friends and family also, please don't forget to check out the Flying Fruit Bowl on Code UK for daily art inspiration. And if you're a creative, please get in touch for a chance to be featured or interviewed. Once again, thank you very much for listening. And until next time, folks, please stay safe.